Hello, I'm Dr. Sam and this is Dr. Sam's Health. We're just a couple of days away from New Year and uh, tomorrow we're going to have New Year's Eve and it's a very, very interesting time of our lives when we reflect on what happened the year before, what in the past year uh, and at the same time we're thinking about what we're going to do in the next year and many of us we're making New Year's resolutions and I think it's a good time to talk about the New Year's resolutions today. You see, in the past several days I've been talking to my colleagues, to my family members, friends, to my patients, and I work in addictions. A lot of my patients are, are making uh, New Year's resolutions uh, to quit smoking, to reduce their drinking, to stop using drugs and do a number of other things. A lot of my friends and colleagues are making resolutions related to weight loss, to exercise, uh, and, and many, many other things. But in all these conversations, I, I spotted a couple of very interesting themes. Theme number one was that pretty much almost everyone I spoke to had some plans for the next year, and the vast majority of these people would make an actual a New Year's resolution, more or less formal or not, but they would still make them. The second common theme was that pretty much the same people who were making New Year's resolutions were quite skeptical about the whole idea of make it one. Uh, I cannot say that they would quote research, but they would make it sound more or less like scientific. You know, there are quite a few indications that uh, that making a New Year's resolution means that you are so desperate that you are likely not be, be able to achieve your, your goal. I actually googled it and uh, I came across a number of web pages, blogs, video logs, and uh, other sources of information when people would be talking about New Year's resolutions and uh, pretty much the common thing there was that there is some research that, that shows that New Year's resolutions are uh, pretty much never accomplished uh, and people are failing very quickly within a week or two. So, I'm a scientist and I'm a clinician who works with people who actually make New Year's resolutions and uh, these resolutions are actually very important for their, uh, the clinical course of their condition. Uh, plus, I'm running this YouTube channel, I'm, uh, I have my website, I've got quite a few ideas uh, related to uh, behavior change, and uh, I felt compelled to, to dig deeper and to try to find some sort of a research article that would be actually focused on New Year's resolution success rate. Ideally, this kind of article would be based on actual research, field research, where there would be a group of people who would, who would make New Year's resolution and another group of people who are not making New Year's resolution and there would be some sort of a comparison, them in a uh, several months perspective. I was lucky enough to find one article exactly like that. The article was authored by Dr. John Norcross, who is some sort of a legend in the field of psychology. I actually never knew that he was doing this kind of research. Uh, uh, the study is quite old. Uh, but it was very interesting to find uh, uh, this piece of work of his and, uh, you know, it just adds to his legendary status. Uh, so when talking about this article, uh, it is based on a very good, uh, solid research done by good, well-established researchers, published in a peer-reviewed journal with relatively, with at least decent uh, impact factor and quoted by 100 plus uh, other researchers. So, it's a trustworthy source of information uh, and uh, what we will do is I will go over the design of the study, their results and their interpretation. So, the design part. Researchers have called almost 1300 randomly selected telephone numbers uh, and asked if people who picked up the phone would be willing to participate in the very short research study. Uh, out of this almost 1,300 uh, numbers, only 434 um, agreed to participate, uh, which is quite a low response rate, but still uh, it is important to uh, mention. Uh, out of this 434 people, uh, researchers were able to um, identify two subgroups of uh, subjects. Uh, one subgroup were people who were able to identify some sort of a behavior that they would like to change in the new year, and they were willing to make a New Year's resolution. There were 159 individuals in this group and we'll call them uh, resolvers, those who are making New Year's resolution. That's our kind of experimental group, though it's not an experiment. Uh, 
it's a naturalistic study. Another subgroup or another cohort of uh, subjects comprised of people who were able to identify some sort of a behavior that they would like to change, but at the same time they were not willing or ready to make a New Year's resolution. So, in the end of the day, we ended up with 159 people who were willing to make a New Year's resolution and 123 individuals who were not willing to make New Year's resolution. At the same time, both groups were quite similar and they were able to identify some, something that they would like to change. As a side note, people who were in Resolvers group were in the uh, action stage of change and people who were in the non-Resolvers group were in contemplation stage of change. Uh, these are stages of change that are described in something that is called uh, trans-theoretical model of change. Uh, very famous, very commonly used um, conceptual model that we use in addictions, but I think uh, I'll make a special video about this one just because it's not only very common in psychology or in addictions field, but uh, I think we can apply it to our, uh, our efforts to change our physique uh, to transform our bodies and achieve a uh, good, healthy lifestyle. So, returning to our study. Uh, the researchers have described, of course, as in any serious research, the, the subgroups of, uh, of subjects. Uh, they were actually quite similar. Uh, vast majority of them were Caucasians, 99%. Majority of them were women, 72%. In terms of the actual goals that these people were setting for the new year, whether it was a resolution or not, they were quite similar. Uh, the top three uh, issues or problems uh, to be addressed were weight loss, starting to exercise, and uh, smoking cessation. Interestingly enough, resolvers were way more likely to list exercise. Uh, they did it in 22% compared to non-resolvers, who listed it only in 9% of cases. Otherwise, the groups were similar and what is most important, was what is most interesting for us, is what happened next. Next thing, uh, researchers had uh, made a commitment to actually call these people at certain intervals of time, uh, several weeks later, a couple of weeks later, several weeks later, three and six months later. And uh, they were able to actually collect a lot of information, not only about the subjects, but also uh, about their goals and uh, how successful they were in achieving them in the uh, in the follow-up period. And now we're getting to the core of their findings, the most interesting part. So, in a couple of weeks after New Year, 71% uh, of people who made New Year's resolution uh, were sticking to their goal and trying to change their behavior, whereas uh, people who, who did not make their resolution, uh, they were actually still quite likely to at least attempt something. Half of them did, 51%. What is really interesting is what happened in a half a year after making or not uh, the New Year's resolution. Because what we are really interested in is the continuous success. 46% of people who made New Year's resolution did actually manage to succeed in their goal. 46%. I think it's a fantastic number. Pretty much half of the people who made New Year's resolution managed to stick to their goals. And let's compare it to people who did not make New Year's resolution. Only 4% of them uh, achieved their goal. I think it's a drastic difference. The dr difference that should motivate everyone uh, who watches this video or reads this research to actually to make their commitment. Now I would like to take a pause and to make uh, some sort of an emotional comment. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really shocked. When I was googling the uh, success rates of New Year's resolutions, I came across a, across a bunch of like articles and posts and videos where people were trashing this idea and saying, you're so desperate, uh, uh, you will fail, you will fail, you will fail. And they, they had the nerve to actually quote some sort of a research. They were saying, oh, science says. No, science doesn't say it. You either misleading people who are reading your blogs or you have no clue how to read research articles or you're just lying. Actually, interestingly enough, I remember clearly that one of the bloggers was saying that uh, that your success rate are 4% if you're making New Year's resolution. No, it's absolutely wrong. Your success rate if you are not making New Year's resolution is 
If you are making a New Year's re resolution, your success rate is 46%, which is 11.5 times higher. I think this is a good evidence that making a New Year's resolution actually makes a huge difference in terms of your success rate. Several other points I would like to add. I think that if you are making a New Year's resolution, uh, it shows several things. First of all, it shows that there is some problem that you want to solve. And the second thing, it shows that you are able to identify this problem. And the third thing is that you're not only aware of this problem, uh, but it's also severe enough, problematic enough, to actually motivate you to change something. Another thing, which is I think is very important, is that uh, when you are making a resolution, effectively, in order to make one, you have to think the problem through and make a plan. At this point, I would like to refer you to one of my previous videos, which was about SMART goals. And I would like to remind you that, you know, it's a very well-established strategy to make proper goals. And we can, we can apply this strategy to the, to the New Year's resolutions. So, the idea is that instead of just making a vague goal, you will make a SMART goal. SMART goal stands for Specific, Measurable, uh, Achievable, Relevant, and Time. I know, again, suggest that you watch the video and when you are making New Year's resolution you will try to apply this methodology to your, to your uh, New Year's resolution. Another thing, uh, I already mentioned this trans-theoretical model of change, uh, which uh, describes six stages of change, uh, pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, maintenance and relapse. Uh, it's a very common uh, concept and I will definitely make a special video about it. Uh, but for our purposes, I would like to say that if you are making a new, year, new Year's resolution, it effectively moves you a couple of stages of change up. That means that if you are aware of your problem and you are not making a, a, a New Year's resolution or any kind of resolution, you are in a contemplation stage of change. If you are preparing uh, to make a change or if you are already like, set up a certain time frame for uh, making a change in the nearest future, in the next several days, you are effectively moving to preparation or uh, action stage of change, which is couple, one or two stages uh, above contemplation. And uh, there are quite a few research articles uh, and studies showing that actually the higher your stage of change, the more likely you are to succeed. Having said that, I think that in my today's video I have actually showed you enough evidence that supports the idea of making New Year's resolution and I hope you will be able to make one for yourself this year. So I will wish you a happy new year. I hope that 2018 will be an amazing year for you. I hope that you will make a New Year's resolution and I hope you will, that you will be able to achieve it. I'll see you in my next videos. I've got quite a few ideas on what to talk about. Don't forget to subscribe put your likes or dislikes uh, just to show if you appreciate or not uh, what I'm posting here. Don't hesitate to ask your questions, uh, be active, show us your interest and uh, I'll try to answer to your questions and I'll try to be more active. That will be my, uh, that will be my New Year's resolution. Happy New Year, all the best guys and ladies and see you soon.